Brianne Gardner is joining us, uh, Wealth Manager at Velocity Investments, part of Raymond James. Brianne, thanks so much for being with us. So talk to us about the shopping list these days. You're trafficking the, that 52-week low list. Yeah, thanks for having me, Amber. Um, yeah, I think what we've seen is obviously we're starting to see a little bit of greed take over the market participation. Um, and, you know, we, we are kind of shifting from now overweight tech to underweight tech as we've seen this magnificent since seven really carry the market. And we've seen a strong dislocation of almost 10% between the S&P 500 and the equal weight S&P 500. So to us, that presents a great buying opportunities to some of these sectors that haven't participated yet year to date in this market rally. So for us, um, you know, we're favorable on definitely healthcare, um, overweight, um, looking at the telcos, as you mentioned, talk, looking at Verizon, um, TELUS, and really see there's opportunities there um, and, and definitely future growth. I mean, still in the communication sector, um, still 20% off its highs. So, and we're seeing improving fundamentals. So that is, is cre creating, um, you know, even with stable di dividends, great buying opportunities. Are you, and are you convinced, especially for AT&T, that that dividend is sustainable? I mean, they're yielding north of seven, eight percent right now. Yeah, I think it's definitely something we monitor. Our analysts have done a, d a deep dive into due diligence on kind of the dividends and the stability of the dividends in the communication sector. So that's something we have been watching closely. Um, as of right now, we still see that they can hold them at these levels, um, but definitely something that we monitor under on our radar. It's interesting that you've now shifted to underweight tech, and I want to use NVIDIA as kind of a poster child for this conversation, a huge run up. Um, it's pulled back, let's call it 12% from its all time high that it saw in July. Some analysts are out today calling it a buying opportunity. Morgan Stanley, for example, says the sell off's a good entry point. George Soros and his 13F loading up on uh, NVIDIA as well. Is this a, you know, as you're moving underweight, are you basically saying that this pullback is not enough to get you kind of uh, keeping the sector at an overweight? I think we still hold some of the good quality techs. We have been taking profits along the way on the ride up, which I think is important, right? I think um, as you see the strength we've seen in the technology sector, um, even NVIDIA hitting the 50-day moving average right now, you know, that is a, a good indicator. It could be a, a buy, present a buying opportunity um, or it could continue further weakness. Um, I think the run-up that we've seen, again, has been a lot of AI and greed-driven. So for us, you know, we refrain from kind of losing that portfolio discipline and have shifted to focusing on quality at this time and a little bit more defensive. I think we've seen the S&P 500, you know, in the past two weeks pull down 3%. Um, and right now hitting the 50-day moving average as well. Um, from more of a technical perspective. So we see another 4% pullback from mm. here before we really see a support level. So, you know, that's almost a 7% correction, which would show kind of that bottoming of the Bollinger Band. So for us, we do expect continued weakness headed into seasonally weaker August and September. So telcos is something you would pick up. What would you pick up? I, I assume when you're talking defensive, you're also looking in healthcare, um, but that's a sector that has also run up because of enthusiasm around uh, you know, particularly d diet drugs or diabetes, weight loss drugs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We own companies and still favorable on companies like Eli Lilly, Merck, Abby, Johnson & Johnson, you know, those, again, big pharma sector. And as you mentioned, yeah, we've seen even the, the healthcare ETF kind of break out into new highs looking at PPH. So we still favor the sector as a whole because it is a more defensive-based sector, um, and we want to position the portfolio ahead. Um, you know, we still see you know potential recession, maybe the the recession being kicked down the can a little bit down the line, but we still see that happening. So we would rather pick up quality companies, and as you mentioned as well, looking at communications and telcos. Um, you know, still collecting great dividends from both TELUS and Verizon. Um, and we are seeing improving fundamentals. Um, so looking at more value plays and where we can pick up quality, but not chasing after um, some of these sectors that have rallied up significantly year to date. 
Well, was a lot of the PMs that I talked to that that are echoing a lot of what you're saying have also, you know, you're going under weight tech, have also started to nudge up the weight that Canadian stocks have in their portfolio. How are you thinking about that Canada versus U.S. split in your portfolios right now? Yeah, we are um, looking at, I mean, even thinking of financials and energy, that really does kind of help push up the TSX. We are starting to um, do some due diligence, especially on the energy sector and watching energy very closely and seeing some opportunities there. So even if you see WTI, you know, breaking out sideways from this downward trend, um, we've seen over the last kind of 12 months and now oil over $80 a barrel. I think that's something that we're watching and still financials. Um, I see, you know, there's definitely some opportunities there. So we are still kind of a little bit overweight U.S. at this time from an mm -hmm. equity perspective versus Canada. Um, but we are seeing some opportunities present in Canada as well.